Okay, let's go back to the original L for our bar problem result. Right? Now, it, if you remember correctly, and the way the NetLogo model is implemented, um, Arthur uh, basically suggested that each agent had a bag of strategies. They would uh, get those strategies from some sort of oracle. Uh, they would mysteriously give them to them at the beginning of the game. And then they would consider which of the strategies would create uh, the best results for them by the end of uh, in each time step, right? Given the past performance. So at the end of Arthur's paper, he says that if a, Brian Arthur's paper, that if a GA, a genetic algorithm was used instead of a bag of strategies, the results would be roughly the same. And I'm not going to go into too much detail about uh, how a genetic algorithm works uh, in this class, uh, though um, there's a couple other um, courses on the Complexity Explorer website that would talk to you about that. Um, but um, let's let's just imagine that a genetic algorithm is a, it's a machine learning algorithm that basically, um, using evolutionary principles, can try to optimize or try to find the optimal space of solutions for a problem. So in this case, it's going to take a strategy and it's going to manipulate it to try and find a better strategy, right? So Fogel um, and the colleagues in 1999 actually took up Arthur's challenge and built the l for all bar problem uh, model that used the GA to optimize uh, the strategy. So that each, basically at the end of every time step, um, every individual in the model based upon the past history it had would fit the data as well as possible and try and figure out whether or not it would attend to the next time step by using the GA to come up with an optimal strategy for attendance. Right? He showed that once that particular strategy uh, was used, right, that the average attendance actually was lower than 60, which is what uh, Arthur had shown, but instead was closer to 57. So instead, and one of the things about this was that he actually allowed each individual to run a genetic algorithm for 25 generations with 100 different strategies per generation, right? So that's about, you know, that's a lot of computational power compared to Brian Arthur's original um, case where they simply had a bag of, say, five strategies or so, right? So um, this made, when I was a, um, a early, late grad student, early postdoc, this made me kind of curious about, well, you know, if random attendance at the bar is 50, right? Because if half the time you attend and half the time you don't, if you just flip a coin, and Arthur's attendance is 60, and the Fogel et al. paper, which seems to be fairly optimal, achieves an attendance of 57, and if we think about, like, perfectly rational agents, right, then maybe they would be 50. It's not obvious, right? Um, one way to think of that they might be 50 is that if all of the agents are trying to fit a finite amount of data and they have as much computational power as they want, um, then, you know, given the fact that there's only a finite amount of data, you're going to get some of them predict, you're going to get on average half of them predicting it's going to be um, uh, crowded, half of them predicting it's not going to be crowded, so you get 50 of them going. Or maybe they all start at the exact same point, come to the exact same prediction, in which case um, they're all going to either attend or not attend each week, and assuming that's roughly distributed, um, then that would be 50 um, as well, right? Though again, that's a mean, it's not actually a good characteristic. So, you know, if you plot these points kind of, you know, on a, on a graph, on a made up, completely made up graph that's not real data at all, but the graph I was thinking at the time, right, you can think of like how much people evaluate or how much, you know, rationality or computational power they're allowed to have access to, uh, and then what the average attendance of the bar is, right? And it might be the case that maybe there's some sort of um, curve here, and maybe, Brian Arthur, just by the particular set of choices he made and making good assumptions, wound up hitting this optimal value, right? And so I decided, well, we could actually build an experiment to test this out. So I worked with Forrest Stonedahl, uh, who is also with Uri Walensky, um, and we decided to design a genetic algorithm as well to optimize the strategy space in the uh, NetLogo model, in the l for all NetLogo model. And what we did was we varied the amount of computational power the, that the, each agent had um, from zero to 20 generations of computational power. And the point of what that is isn't very important. The point for you to know is that it allowed us to kind of scale at finite degrees how much effort each agent was putting into trying to predict next week's generation, right? 
Um, and we ran the model for uh, 500 ticks. Uh, we looked at the average over 30 runs, and we then measured the mean attendance per week for the last 100 weeks. And what we showed was that sure enough, um, it, you know, we never quite got all the way up to that 60, uh, but as you increase the computational power, uh, the average attendance at the bar went down, which is interesting, right? You have agents who are able to make better and better decisions, and yet the system as a whole performs uh, less well. And you know, this kind of feeds in a lot to Brian Arthur's original point, which is that it's not necessarily each individual agent and their decision, it's the ecosystem of strategies and decisions, right? That really come to get the societal uh, results. And as in our argument was, that as you increase the computational power, each individual agent is gonna look more and more like every other individual agent. And so therefore, um, the heterogeneity of the system goes down, uh, which means that uh, the overall performance of the system goes down as well, right? The overall bar problem to optimally, optimally really requires a hetero, heterogeneity of agents in order to get close to that 60 maximum. And you just don't get that with um, uh, increased computational power. Uh, so this is one example of how you might combine agent-based modeling machine learning where we actually put a genetic algorithm into each and every agent to help them make a decision. And this is an example also of something uh, that we talked about early on, which is truly adaptive agents. The agents in this context are actually making different decisions based upon their past experiences uh, and as a result, even when presented with the same uh, current situation, right? So based upon what I've done in the past, I might be using a different strategy now to make my decision. And so as a result, I might change the way I solve the problem that I'm faced with. And I'd be remiss if I don't mention that, you know, this problem has not just inspired us to do some interesting things, but there's a number of other um, interesting and related models to the overall model that you might want to look at in NetLogo. So, the minority game is a very simplified and idealized version of the L for all bar problem where basically at each time step each agent has to decide whether they want to be a one or a zero for instance uh, and if you are in the minority um, of being either a one or a zero you get rewarded if you're in the majority you don't and this has some nice um, similarities to stock markets, for instance, right? You always want to be buying when other people are selling and selling when other people are buying um, if you want to make money in the end, right? Uh, and in fact, Brian Arthur and John Holland and others went on to actually kind of build a artificial stock market uh, based upon um, some of the principles in Alpha All uh, that really was an interesting look and, and kind of showed uh, some of the principles uh, that we see in real stock markets in this kind of artificial situation, right? So you could create booms and busts, for instance, um, by, by perturbing the parameters and the mixtures of the agents. And that actually is very relevant to the discussion we just had about the computational power and heterogeneity, because a lot of the artificial stock market results are contributed to the fact that um, there's a mixture of agents in the population, right? Some technical traders, some fundamental traders, um, and so forth. And then this really isn't directly related to the L for all, but um, I find it a very interesting model. It's also an economic model. Uh, you might want to take a look at what in the NetLogo world we call the root beer supply chain game, but it's also just called the beer game. Uh, this was originally developed by John Sturman, or was originally explored in detail, at least by John Sturman. Uh, and uh, it's a very interesting game. And in this case, it's a little bit different than any other agent-based model we've talked about because it's a participatory simulation agent-based model. In other words, you can actually you actually have humans who interact with the agents in order to make decisions about the way the world works. And in this case, you're trying to make decisions about how much root beer to order. We want the beer in the original one, but because NetLogo is a kid-friendly uh, software package, root beer. Right? Uh, and what we show is that, and what the model shows, we don't show, but the model shows that um, small delays in the amount of information uh, you have can, can cause huge bullwhip types effects in terms of supplies and ordering, right? Um, and I don't really have a lot of time to go into detail about that game, but I, if you're interested in kind of 
your rationality in supply chains or you know the, the 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 fact that people don't do a good job of accounting for delays and lead up time uh in supply chains i highly recommend you take a look at the the beer game the root beer game okay so that's all for uh this week in terms of the content i'll we'll follow up with a brief overview uh, discussion uh in in the next unit and that'll be it